instruments that are very neck heavy. By neck heavy or headstock heavy, I mean that when you sit down to practice and you have your instrument on your lap, they tend to dip like so. You know? They don't stay balanced. Um, I have some instruments that are pretty uh, pretty balanced. This is my Conklin 7 string GTBD7 and um, it's, it's somewhat balanced. It's a bit of a dip, but it's not too bad, especially for a 7-string. Um, I do like the way this feels, but it does have a bit of a, a dip in it. This is a 6-string Music Man bongo bass, one of the, my better sounding basses. But as you can see, the headstock is pretty big on it, and uh, like the other ones, it does do a bit of a dip as well. Also, this, this rest here doesn't quite fit my leg very well, but it's not as bad as the MTD, but still pretty bad. My five-string Ibanez is actually pretty well balanced. You know, it sits on my lap pretty well, uh, but you're not going to have too much of a problem when you have five, five strings and, and four strings. This Ibanez six-string here is also pretty bad when it comes to headstock dive. My MTD Kingston Z bass plays great, feels great, but man, it has a horrendous neck dive to it. Well, the point I'm getting at here is that a lot of people want to um, have a balanced instrument. Um, some things I've seen online as a as a way to to remedy this is um, some people say, oh, use a thicker strap. You know, I don't like playing. I don't like practicing with a strap on me. It's not comfortable, you know. I want to practice like this, you know. If it was up to me, whenever I played live, I'd, I'd sit down as well. But whenever you practice, when you have a neck-heavy instrument, you have to figure out how to balance it while you're playing. And a lot of it comes down to kind of supporting it with your with your palm like this as you're playing, and your fingers. And another way is kind of to push down on the pickup while you play. Another way is to kind of have your forearm right here balancing it, but ideally it should be that the instrument should sit on you and, and play uh, balance. The Ibanez Groove Line series uh, says that they apparently have a balanced six string. I've not played those, but uh, I'd like to. So if you want to have a balanced instrument while you practice and while you play live, you have a couple of options uh, in store for you that are already available on the market. One of them is called a heads-up strap. Uh, the heads-up strap, uh, I don't have one, but uh, it's like a strap and there's a couple of pockets that you can put weights in. It's, uh, it'll kind of weigh down one side of the instrument. The heads-up strap runs for like $49.99 online. And uh, when I went to try to see if one was available, I, I couldn't find a way to actually buy one. I don't even know if they're still uh, around anymore. The other one is called an axe balancer. Uh, I don't know if this is meant for bass guitars or not because this particular thing is um, you you take out your your you take out the pin, then you put this counterweight on, and the counterweight is around seven ounces or so. You put back the pin in, and it's supposed to kind of add a little bit more weight on this end. Well, as a bass player, I need more than a couple of ounces. I need some pounds to actually uh, balance this thing out. So I came up with my own method that you can make on your own, and it's way cheaper than the $49.99 uh, heads-up strap and the $39.99 axe balancer. Mine was actually a lot cheaper. Here's how to make your own counterweight for neck-heavy guitars. First, let's get our materials. You'll need an old guitar strap, a needle and thread, a wireless pouch, and some scuba weights. If you can't get a wireless pouch, you can make your own pouch. I made my first counterweight by sewing together some old jeans. 
You can get scuba weights at any diving store or most sporting goods stores. The reason I use these is because they're soft and won't bang up the instrument. Of course, if you can't find scuba weights like the kind I use, then you can get creative and use anything that'll fit inside the pouch. Some suggestions would be a, a human heart, some fruit cake, or a breast implant. All right, so now that we have our materials, let's take our old guitar strap and thread it through our Wi-Fi pouch. You want to expose the strap hole just a bit out of the top and then cut off the excess. Now we have to permanently attach the pouch to the strap so you won't have to worry about the thing falling apart on you. Get your needle and thread and we're going to tack the strap onto the pouch. It's important to know that when you're making your little tack here and going through, that obviously you don't go through the entire pouch itself, thus closing it up. You don't want to do that. You want to go through just the sides and as you can see, there's a little room there that you can pull your thread through. So that's what I'm doing. Hey, maybe, the, maybe there's an easier way to do this and maybe you know a uh, better way of sewing or attaching this. Maybe you can attach it by pins or whatever. I wouldn't use glue, but to make your little knot, I pulled it through and I'm going to catch that last loop like that. Pull it out until there's a little, that's a little loop there. A thread through that loop. Make a knot. And do that several times. Wow, look at that. And I'm going to continue to do this. There are a couple more spots there. Then I'll attach this thing here to the strap itself, and I might do a couple more. Um, right inside here just to make sure that it's going to stand the test of time and uh, hold the weight even though it's just two pounds you know I want it to last a long time now that the strap is attached you can cover up the thread tack with paint to prevent the strap from unraveling you'll want to carterize the strap with a lighter I'm not sure what most straps are made of, but they're most likely a nylon type material and can slightly melt when exposed to a flame, kind of like shoelaces. Right, look, don't be a moron and catch the thing on fire. It takes very little to melt the ends together, so do it quickly so the frays are gone. That's pretty much it. Now just add the scuba weights to balance it out and you're set. I went out and bought a pair of uh, two pound scuba weights and three pound scuba weights. So that way you can have any combination of just two pounds or four pounds or five pounds or six pounds and so on and so forth. You know how to add. All right. Have a good day. So I use strap locks now and these are Dunlop strap locks. So what this is is you attach this little gold piece here strap and the strap snaps into place like that it then exposes quite a bit of area there so what I did was I just attach this pin attach this part strap lock doesn't get in the way And then that kind of dangles there. I don't even really feel it moving about and it keeps the instrument right up. I don't even have to mess with it anymore. There's no more dive. I don't feel it moving. And if I wanted to, I could add more weight to it. So I got three of these little pouches here because I'm going to be using three different bases live with uh, Cirque Dreams. And um, three different pouches. Three different weight combinations. This fucking thing up. Comes right off. That's it. Some people like to, some people said that they undid this part here and put some 
coins or some kind of some kind of lead weight inside. Some people attach something over here. This way, it's non-destructive to your instrument. It's hard to kind of see. You know, you can add more weight to it if you want. You can add a little, as little or as much as you want. This is one pound. This is two pounds. I would use this two pound weight for this instrument there. I find that I use less weight with a strap uh, than with um, this practicing. So I'm, st I'm still going to use this to practice with, but I'll use these pouches for live. And um, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than using the uh, stuff that they had available online. These wireless pouches, uh, each one ran me about 16 bucks. Uh, a two pound scuba weight was like seven dollars, I think. A one pound one was probably like five. And then I just used an old strap that someone left at my house, so this strap was free. So overall, it's it's a lot cheaper than buying whatever they have available online. Mm -hmm.